Hello and welcome to the Urology Blog. I'm Dr. Cully Carson, the Professor and Chief of Urology at the University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill. A, no, a number of things are going on in urology today that I think are important. I just returned for the, from the Sexual Medicine Society of North America meeting in Toronto, Canada, where they discussed some issues that are important to all urologists who see patients on a regular basis. We all know that priapism is a significant problem for all of us as urologists. In fact, everyone knows the difficulty with, with dealing with many of these patients who present to the emergency room at midnight or after, have prolonged erections or in pain, uh, and have no clear cause of their, of their priapism. We all know that the, that the initial treatment is, is best with sympathomimetic drugs and minimally invasive procedures, such as irrigation of the corpus cavernosum, irrigation with either saline or with some of the sympathomimetic drugs in an effort to improve the priapism and make the priapism resolve. Unfortunately though, many of the patients who we see with, with priapism come to see us after they've had an erection for more than 24 hours, a situation that's very difficult to deal with. And we all know that the classic way of dealing with this is usually a shunt procedure of some sort. There are a number of shunt procedures that have been designed and developed with various amounts of effectiveness with, for, for resolving priapism. At the Sexual Medicine Society of North America, there were two excellent papers that changed our view of what priapism should be treated as and how it should be taken care of. The first paper from Tom Liu's group in, at UC San Francisco reported by, by Brandt and colleagues was the, the, uh, the, the demonstration, the de description of the so-called T-shaped shunt. And the T-shaped shunt is basically very similar to the Winters procedure where some uh, device is placed through the glands penis into the tunic albigenia of the corpus cavernosum and the corpus cavernosum allowed to drain. We all as urologists know that the winter shunt was really poorly effective in most patients and we've most of us gone to the Algorab shunt which is a more definitive shunt in the distal area of the penis. Well, Tom Liu and his colleagues describe a shunt where a penile block is, is carried out and in fact they, they describe using this shunt in the office or in the emergency room without taking patients to the, to, to the operating room where after a penile block a T-shaped incision is made into the glands penis on either side penetrating the tunic albigenia of the corpus cavernosum. Once this is done much of the blood from the priapism can be expressed, but they go one step further, which is very inventive and creative. What they do is they use a, a dilator, a six or seven or eight French dilator, the type that's used in implantation of inflatable penile prostheses, and drop that dilator all the way down to the crura of the corpora cavernosa bilaterally. And by doing that, they break up much of the, of the, of the clot and, and, and congealed blood that's in the corpus cavernosum and express that, that material. At the SMSNA, they reported on 13 patients that they performed this procedure in and found that 12 of them were successful. One required a second procedure, but was successful at the end of the second procedure. The most interesting part of this was of those patients that they were able to follow, and that, that's 13 patients who had a mean follow-up of 13.9 months, so more than a year, 40% of them, 40% had, had, had a return of their erectile function, really a concept that we would have thought foreign some time ago. A second study by, by uh, Burnett and colleagues from Johns Hopkins looked at three patients that they used this similar procedure. They called it the snake procedure, but it was very similar where they used a, a dilator into the corpora cavernosa to break up the, the, the loculated blood and the congealed blood within the corpus cavernosum. They, the, the three patients that they operated on had failed sympathomimetic irrigation techniques. They'd also failed shunting techniques, Algorab shunts and winter shunts. So this was a, was, was a procedure of, 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 of last resort, but it worked extremely well in the three patients that they, that they treated. So basically, I think this brings a new concept to the treatment of some of our patients that need surgical treatment for priapism. And obviously not all patients need surgical treatment, but clearly those that do are a difficult dilemma for all of us in urology that usually occurs in the middle of the night. I think using the, the distal shunt, passing a small dilator down the corpus cavernosum, and then closing the, the shunt as, as the T-shaped shunt describes from, from Tom Liu and his group is an excellent way to salvage some of those patients who have difficult to treat priapisms and priapisms that don't respond 
to either medication or less invasive shunts. Thank you very much for, for, for tuning in and your, your addition, and please uh, join us on Medscape to uh, make comments about this blog. Thank you very much.